Who is the Marvel Comics character Nomad? To answer this question, we have to dive into Marvel Comics and explore history. There have been multiple people to carry the name Nomad, but we'll go through it all and break it down nice and easy. But before we do, I want to say thanks for watching JLS Comics. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. I do upload videos just like this every week. Let's jump into the story. On December 13th, 2020, I found a trademarkia listing and posted it to Twitter announcing that Marvel had filed for and had approved a trademark for the name Nomad, something they do for intended and upcoming projects. And this was a new listing posted after Ironheart, Secret Invasion, Quantumania, I Am Groot, and the other announcements that Disney and Kevin Feige made at December 2020's Disney Investor Call. Very recent as of the posting of this video, in other words. A couple days after I posted that, scooper Charles Murphy speculated that this project could potentially be a follow-up series to Falcon and the Winter Soldier, something we'll see further down the line, and that it wasn't announced because it could potentially be a spoiler for the Falcon and Winter Soldier show. But who is he? The first Nomad appeared in 1974's Captain America issue 180 as an alternate identity for Steve Rogers. Writer Steve Englehart and artist Sal Buscema created the Nomad look and identity for him. More specifically, it was Steve Englehart's girlfriend of the time, Martha Dukeshire, who suggested the name Nomad to him, and she got a credit as well in the book for that. Steve Rogers had learned that the U.S. government, one high-ranking official in particular, was in bed with and doing business with the Secret Empire, a global terrorist organization. So he rid himself of the Captain America name and all it stood for, and instead took on the name Nomad, a man without a country. But by issue 184, Rogers was back to being Captain America. He realized that the people needed a hero in their corner, and he was back to fight for them. Then... Edward Furbo was given a costume by the villain Red Skull and was called Nomad for a couple issues of the same title. This was in 1981, but three short issues later, Ed was killed by one of Red Skull's minions. Nearly two years later, a guy named Jack Monroe was the next one to take on the nom de guerre Nomad. Jack is the one who's had the name the longest and is most closely associated with the name Nomad. Jack himself first appeared in 1972's Captain America issue 153. While Jack was to be the third Bucky Barnes, it's said that Jack was actually the Bucky that adventures alongside 1950s Captain America decades before. But this was after the Golden Age Captain America was frozen in ice and Bucky Barnes had seemingly died. In his place was William Burnside, who underwent cosmetic surgery and procedures to become Captain America, and even took on Cap's name. Jack Monroe was born in Iowa on the same day that Japan attacked Pearl Harbor, which was December 7th, 1941. Jack's father was a Nazi party supporter. In fact, most of the people in their town in Iowa were. And when the FBI raided his home and really the entire town, Jack was put into foster care, ultimately growing up in Connecticut. And later, his foster parents were killed by spies during the Korean War. And so Jack was put into a boarding school. And his history teacher at the school was William Burnside. And from then on, the two formed a bond, eventually becoming Cap and Bucky and fighting alongside each other against Red Skull and the Red Scare of Communism. But once they started breaking down from not getting their super soldier serum booster treatments, the FBI came to them and put them both in suspended animation. So how's that for a retcon? It wasn't until his first appearance that Jack and William were dethawed and brought back to a conscious state by a physician named Dr. Faustus, at which time they attacked Captain America and the Falcon. Dr. Faustus turned Burnside into the grand director of a criminal network called the Corporation. And it was Captain America and Daredevil who took Burnside down, and Jack was placed in the custody of S.H.I.E.L.D., where he was remanded to a S.H.I.E.L.D.-run medical facility for years, given treatments, he was looked after, and ultimately cured of his delusional, psychotic state that all those years in suspended animation had wrought on him. In an effort for a psyops, S.H.I.E.L.D. gave Jack an old nomad suit to fight against a villain named Viper. Cap, when he was Nomad, had defeated her, so they were hoping that she'd freak out if she saw the Nomad costume again. So Jack helped Captain America fight Viper, and after their victory, Jack decided to keep the Nomad costume and the Nomad name for himself. And the Nomad fought against Slayer, not the band, there was a villain named Slayer. He then helped Captain America fight the Sisters of Sin, and then he battled against Baron Zemo. And right after this, Nomad assisted Captain America in fighting and taking down Red Skull. Seemingly for the last time, but not for the last time. A few issues later, Nomad was on his own and fighting a psychotic, unkillable mercenary named Madcap. This is also when he further separated himself from Captain America. 
And later, Nomad got a new costume. This was just in time for his battle with Slug, a Miami drug kingpin whose real name is Ulysses X Lugman. This is around the time that Jack picked up a hitchhiker on his motorcycle whose name was Priscilla Lyons. And Priscilla was on her way to Miami to save her brother Phil who was working for the slug. Her brother Phil didn't want to be rescued though. He liked working in the drug trade. So in retaliation he drugged Jack and tossed Jack right in the water to drown him. So Priscilla called Captain America to come help and Cap did come down and help and together they took down Slug and burned down Slug's yacht. At one point, Captain America was stripped of his identity, but he was still out fighting, now calling himself the Captain and wearing a black costume. Falcon, Nomad, Demolition Man joined Steve on his harrowing adventures as the Captain. And Priscilla also joined them. By this time, she and Jack were dating, and she had taken on the name Vagabond. And Jack didn't like Demolition Man too much, and this was exacerbated when Demolition Man started training Vagabond so she could go out on active missions with them. When a villain named Vibro attempted to break out of the vault super prison, he ran into Cap, Falcon, and Nomad. They then fought against Viper, Sidewinder, and Diamondback of the Serpent Society as they tried to poison the water supply of the U.S. Capitol. And it was during this time that the Commission captured Nomad, Falcon, and the Captain and put them in prison. And this was the same prison where Diamondback was being held. So Sidewinder, also part of the Serpent Society, had teleported into the prison to free Diamondback and he said, hey, I'll free the three of you too. The captain said, no, we shouldn't run away from authorities and Nomad said, whatever, I'm out of here. And he left with Diamondback and Sidewinder. So when he did this, it caused Priscilla, Vagabond, to break up with him. So then the captain later sought out Nomad and found him drunk and wasted in a bar and they parted on bad terms. So now, out on his own, Nomad turned into a warring Nomad, starting a violent war with a drug dealer. And he also shed his costume and turned into a trench coat wearing, bike riding vigilante with sunglasses that would make Macho Man Randy Savage proud. He snapped into a new identity. He rescued a baby girl from a drug addicted prostitute and her pimp, Eddie Vanilli, no relation to Millie Vanilli. And Jack decided to raise the baby as his own little Grogu, calling the infant Bucky. And he went around the countryside taking on the underworld, one merc job at a time, one criminal at a time. He was a street level hero that would do this work to get money so he could care for the baby. Nomad was popular enough that he got his own miniseries and title in the 1990s, although to be fair, most characters did. At the start of his miniseries, the Commission on Superhuman Activities was growing wary of Nomad's vigilante activities and his ongoing war against drug lord Umberto Cefilios. So the commission sent Captain America after Nomad to rein him in. And in Juneau, Alaska, Cap confronted Jack and Jack was forced to use the super gun that he had had that he wanted to dismantle. And when he did use it, he ended up killing pretty much everybody in the process. He then took to the streets fighting crime, but also social troubles like homelessness, drug addiction, hate crimes, the AIDS epidemic. And during these days, he ran into Deadpool, an evil clone of Gambit, he ran into US Agent, and he saw the Punisher in the Punisher War arc, as well as the Devil of Hell's Kitchen, Daredevil. Another time, Doctor Strange recruited Nomad for his secret defenders to help take on an ancient sorcerer named Lilin. A while after this, Nomad was almost murdered, and he tracked his would-be assassin to his old hometown in Iowa and figured out it was someone Jack knew from childhood, an old bully named Bart Ingrid, who had revived the Nazi party in their hometown and set up an entire Nazi encampment. Another criminal, named Giscard Apurer, had found the infant Bucky's mother and turned her into a killing machine. So Nomad then took out 88, which was an operative working for Bart Ingrid, and he used 88's weapons to take down the Nazi camp. Nomad then went after Bart Ingrid, who was in Washington, D.C., trying to blow up the U.S. Senate building. And Nomad did defeat Bart, but he was thought to have died because Bart detonated a bomb, and Nomad was thought to have died in the explosion. In truth, Nomad was still alive, but the government put him back on ice. So Giscard took in the baby girl and adopted her. Many years later, Jack was revived from suspended animation yet again, this time by Henry Gyrich, who turned him into the Scourge of the Underworld. Henry injected Jack with nanites that made him a slave to Henry's control and Henry sent him after the Thunderbolts. Nomad as the Scourge killed Zemo, Jolt, and Techno. Almost. Techno was able to revive Jolt before he himself perished. Jack then captured a Pym Particles infused Atlas. And then with Jolt back, they were able to capture Jack as Scourge and figure out who he really was. So Mach 2 was able to disable the nanotech and free Jack from Henry's control. And sometime later, the affliction that ailed Jack back in the Golden Age and the Atomic Age of the 1950s had come back again. Jane Foster revealed to Jack that the super soldier serum was killing him. 
breaking down his body and his mind. And before he passed, he wanted to go to Philadelphia to find his adopted baby girl and say goodbye to her. And he did. He found her, and she had changed her name from Bucky to Julia Winter. After leaving a bar one night, Jack was shot in the chest and stuffed in the trunk of a car, and it turned out that the assassin was none other than Bucky Barnes, now calling himself the Winter Soldier. It was a sad ending to his tale, a denouement entitled The Lonesome Death of Jack Monroe. Winter Soldier needed a patsy, so Jack's fingerprints were planted on the sniper rifle that Winter Soldier had used to murder Red Skull in order to set him up and take the fall for him posthumously. The loneliness of his demise was underscored by his own musings. Sad to realize this now, but what has Jack Monroe been if not just a shadow of other men? There I am as a kid trying to take the place of Bucky, Cap's partner, a war hero, a guy who saw more combat than 20 soldiers combined. What did I think gave me that right? Because I look like him? And there I am running around the end of the 20th century as the second nomad. Like, I really could step into Captain America's shoes. Hell, I couldn't even be the first Scourge. Face it, Jack, you're a nobody. And you've just been trying to fill the emptiness that you really are by playing at being other people. Speaking of playing, the closest thing we've had to Nomad thus far is, believe it or not, Chris Evans' Captain America himself. After Captain America cast off his shield at the end of Captain America Civil War and during the events of Avengers Infinity War, the Russo brothers deconstructed Captain America, having him drop his shield and take on a black costume over his normal patriotic regalia. In fact, Joe Russo said, You'll see into these Avenger films, he's on a very specific journey as a character. Some people have suspected that he may be Nomad heading into Avengers 3, and I wouldn't say that he's exactly Nomad, but he is the spirit of that character. And that's a wrap on this one, my friends. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and you'll be one of the first to know when I upload videos just like this each and every week. I'm Jesse, this is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.